Hello, fishy internet people. I thought I'd do a little short video on how the Farlowella breeding project is going. As you can see, lots of babies. Lots and lots of babies are everywhere. There's Daddy. Um, there's one hanging on the moss in the back. Uh, the tank's a little bit cloudy because I just did a water change and stirred up some of the detritus. So it'll be, probably be cloudy for a few hours, but just ignore that. And on with the show. <laughs> fishy internet people this is one of my 40 breeders this is the tank that has my farlowellas that I'm breeding um, here's the male notice that he has like a wider a wide snout with little tiny bristles on the sides of it that's the male oh the female was out a minute ago but I don't know where she went and I was going to show you the difference, but she's disappeared. This tank is kind of a mess right now. Full of plants and a jungle. Um, it's got Kabodai Rasboras and the Chopre Danios and the Farlowellas in it. And I need to go through and pull a bunch of plants and straighten it up and kind of rescape it. But, the um, Chopra Ganios and the um, Kabodai Resboras have been breeding, and I kind of want their numbers, their numbers over the summer have about doubled, but I want more, so I'm going to kind of leave it alone for now, until I have as many as I want, because everyone's small babies are showing up. And speaking of babies... There is all kinds of Farlovella babies in here. Half-grown ones, the fairly small ones. That is, um, what they're eating there is French-cut green beans. And this tank, like I say, it's a 40 breeder. It's got a sponge filter in each corner and a wave maker to keep the current going good because everybody likes lots of oxygen in the water keep it about 74 degrees pH probably a little bit below 7 but pretty close to 7 this is the only tank that I have that I add a little bit of distilled water to when I change the water because the Farlowella's eggs will not hatch if the water is too hard they calcify so therefore, I soften it up just a bit because I have real hard water in my tap. So I'm going to, there's a ton of half-grown ones in here. If you want to buy any, hit me up. I definitely have some. But I'm going to show you some of them. They've been eating all day on the green beans, so a lot of them are all over in the tank as opposed to on the food because they're full. But they'll have those green beans gone by morning. So I'm going to kind of like go around and show you some of them. Like I say, here's the, the pile of green beans with some partially grown farlowellas. There's a couple little tiny ones in there. To medium sized ones that are ready to sell. They take a long time to grow out, but I've definitely got quite a few now. And there's some there. Like I say, this is the, the daddy of them all. The mama was out a bit ago, and I got a photograph of her that I'm going to use on this video, but I did not 
I do not see her right now. There's one there hanging in the grass. And some there. There's one on the back wall there. I don't know, they're just kind of scattered mostly all over the tank. So, I guess I say I got a sponge filter in each corner and a wave maker. Um, I have a reader box hanging on the side, which is empty right now because I just moved all the babies into a grow out tank. They usually have about one, lay about one batch of eggs a month. But this last time, I just like, as soon as the batch of eggs hatched, they laid another batch of eggs. So, so therefore, I really had too many to go in the breeder box, so I put them in a five gallon tank instead this time. But a lot of times I'll raise them up till in the breeder box till they're big enough to just go into the tank. But, like I say, that's that was a little bit too many babies for the breeder box. Now, if you don't have a breeder box on there, the males will usually lay on the side of the glass. Like, that one's sitting on the side of the glass there. Well, that's a half-grown one there. But anyway, um, they'll usually lay them on the side of the glass, and you got to, like, real carefully take them off with a credit card and put them in the breeder box. But... With the breeder, I just leave the breeder box in here because the male likes to lay on the side of the tube. So when he's, well, I'll wait until, he doesn't have any there right now, but I'll wait until the eggs are almost hatched. And I have two breeder boxes and I'll just take that tube off and drop it into the breeder box and put the other tube on for a circulation. Which works out really well. And the reason that he likes to lay on the tube, since the tube is in there, if you think about it, as opposed to um, laying flat on the glass, because they'll guard, they'll guard their eggs until they hatch. But as opposed to him laying flat on the glass, if he lays on the tube, his head is kind of like wrapped around the tube a little bit when he sucks onto it. So he can actually see better on both sides of the tank, because he's on like an oval wrapped around as opposed to being flat where the, the angle isn't as good so that's why he likes to lay on the tube and it works out pretty convenient for me because like I say then I just wait till the eggs are almost ready to hatch and then I'll just move the whole tube into the breeder box and put another tube on it so and right now the breeder box is empty but I have it going one so that the male can lay eggs on it and two so that it keeps a good amount of moss going in there for when I have the next batch of babies that will give them something to eat. So, that's it for the main tank. If you have any questions about breeding them, just go ahead and ask me. And um, I'm going to switch over to the babies and show you the grow out tank. So this is about a five gallon tank, I think it might be five and a half gallons, using it for a grow out tank for the babies right now. There's probably about 25, 30 babies in there. The bigger ones are about a month old and the smaller ones are about two weeks old, two and a half weeks old maybe. Um, there's a heater in there keeping the water at 76. There's a sponge filter in the corner, lots of catapa leaves, um, which I'm going to have to add some new ones in there pretty quick because they've been eating away at these ones, and a pile of French cut green beans, and let me see if I can get some close-ups on the babies, some up on the glass there, lots of them in the beans. Focus, camera, focus. You can do it. There's a pile of java moss in the corner. I like I say, lots of leaf litter and a clay pot. And a McRock. And a little crypt. And 
over here is a piece of wood, which is also important with Perloellas. I have a little bit of wood in there for them to chew on. It's kind of there in the corner. And lots of babies. Let me see if I can get close enough to get some good shots of babies. So that's it. A five gallon grow out tank. Of course they won't be able to stay in here forever. Because there's a lot of them. I'll move them into a some bigger tank when they get a little bit bigger. But they're fairly slow growing so I won't have to worry about it for a while. And that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day.